Yeah, so I'm going to talk about uh, the SCV, SMP interrupt security feature. Uh, this is actually part of the guest security uh, and guest integrity protection stuff, uh, which is already uh, mainline. And this is the next phase of uh, guest uh, in, in, uh, integrity features, which are coming up. So interrupt security is, uh, is uh, another feature which is going to be added uh, uh, as an as the, the next uh, phase of uh, uh, in guest integrity protection, uh, which are coming up. So uh, basically, for uh, protecting against uh, this is basic. It's a feature which is meant for protection against uh, uh, malicious interrupt uh, or malicious event injection attacks, and uh, for. Protection against these kind of features, uh, SNP provides uh, two uh, mutually exclusive features. One, one is known as the restricted interrupt injection, and the other is known as the alternate interrupt injection. So why do we need uh, uh, interrupt or exception protection? Uh, one of the main reasons why we do we do need is is uh, there could be cases uh, uh, where the the guest virus has certain assumptions about uh, interrupt behavior based on uh, just bare metal. So for example, uh, the interrupt flag is clear, the interrupts are disabled on, on the guest, and the, the, there could be a, a malicious hypervisor injection where interrupts could be just injected in, uh, even when the guest is not expecting it because the interrupt flag is clear. Or the other possibility is that the guest is running on a higher elevated TPR, and, uh, and a lower priority interrupt is injected by the by the by a malicious hypervisor. So, the, so in such cases, a malicious hypervisor can break uh, the guest kernel platform uh, interrupt feature or the or the device drivers because they are not expecting an interrupt to come in, and uh, and the hypervisor can just inject a, a malicious interrupt at that point and causing uh, cause guest uh, failure or breakage in 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 those specific conditions. So. Uh, so this, uh, so SNP basically adds uh, these additional features, which basically you know kind of disables uh, virtual interrupt queuing and also partially disables interrupt injection interface. What we now uh, uh, basically, uh, in case of restricted interrupt injection, uh, what we are doing is it's just uh, just injecting as only a specific uh, defined uh, architecture vector. For example. Uh, uh, as you as you know, on the interrupt uh, on the Intel uh, architecture, zero to thirty ex uh, vectors are exception vectors. So now vector twenty eight is uh, something which has been uh, used by the restricted interrupt injection feature, where uh, uh, vector twenty eight is the only vector which is allowed to be injected in once this feature is enabled, and it just acts as a doorbell. It's it's it's. Uh, it's supposed all kind of interrupt queuing and information between host and guest is supposed to be done in some kind of a para virtualized manner, which, for example, there could be an even queue in a shared memory. And uh, the, the injection interrupt is just like a, just like a doorbell. So as I mentioned, it's uh, all all the hypervisor based interrupt queuing is kind is kind of disabled. Only a new exception vector is defined. Which is pound HV, and this vector is vector 28, uh, which is injected in just to indicate to guests that there's a new interrupt, which is uh, or a new uh, event which is uh, uh, available, and the, the, the interface between uh, host and guest is in a para virtualized manner. So, uh, for example, uh, 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 you could be using uh, you know your Vertio or or some say a VM bus feature to have, or, or some kind of shared a shared mechanism between host and guest to actually do the, the, the actual interrupt injection or queuing thing. Uh, again, this is kind of uh, architected on the APEC thing. So the, the HV, pound HV uh, data structure, which we will see is quite aligned to the APEC thing. So it, uh, so you, the guest implementation doesn't need to be. Uh, Ashish, can you stop for a moment? We have audio issues in the room. We'll tell you when we got connected again. Sorry about this. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, so, uh, so the guest behavior doesn't uh, need to be uh, changed too much uh, because the the whole thing is architected to be very close to uh, to the epic behavior uh, in general. 
what is now defined by the DHC specification? Uh, yes, is there a question? Uh, so, uh, what has been defined by the GHCP specifications is a new HV doable page. Uh, the HV doable page has basically just two main fields right now. There's a pending event field and an EOI assist uh, field. So, the pending event field is defined as, uh, as described in the slide. Uh, you can basically inject, uh, there's a no further signal to indicate that right now you cannot inject any more. Uh, non-maskable uh, uh, interrupts into the guest as the guest is handling a non-maskable event. Ish? And, can you hear me? Uh, yes. Can you please start again with the slides? We just lost the audio and... Oh, oh, with the slide. oh should I start from slide one? No, the, just the slide you were at. Oh, okay. Oh. With that slide. Uh, the HPDB page? Is it again? Uh, uh, this is the slide you want me to start with? Yeah, the slide. Just start again with the slide, please, because okay. we didn't have audio, we couldn't hear you. So, okay. So the HP Doval page is defined by the GHCB specifications, and as I mentioned earlier, it's been structured to align with the APIC behavior. And uh, the HP Doval page has uh, two main fields currently. It's the pending event field, and there's an EOI assist uh, field. The pending event feed is where we actually is used to inject either the non-maskable events or vector interrupts into the guest. Uh, the, the first field, the, the, the topmost bit is basically to just to indicate that right now the guest is, it's a non-maskable event has been uh, injected into the guest and guest is handling it. Until this bit is cleared, uh, the host will not inject any other non-maskable event into the, into the guest. Uh, again, uh, nine and eight bits, bit nine and eight is for basic, basic things, uh, injecting a virtual machine check interrupt or a NMI inject uh, in, uh, interrupt even to the guest. And the lower bits, eight bits are basically an eight bit interrupt vector number, uh, which is uh, the, uh, the actual vector interrupt which is being injected into the guest. Uh, Total configuration is uh, basically an NAE NA event, so it's a uh, non-automatic event, uh, exit event, which has been defined. Uh, typically, it's, uh, there are three uh, new VMG exit events as, again, uh, specified by GACB specifications. So you, you have the main one, which is typically used is the set event, which is uh, where the guest supplies a double page to the host, uh, which is the shared page, uh, 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 on which the, the whole, uh, uh, the, which is basically the HV Doable page, which we talked about in slide five. So this is where uh, the guest uh, does a VMG exit event and supplies the, uh, the guest physical address of the Doable page to be used between the host and the guest. It's typically uh, the guest will do a, in a, in a typical case, the guest will do a P validate and make, make the guest, uh, make this page as a shared page. Set it into a shape page state, and uh, from its uh, point, the hypervisor can also do an RMP update to make sure that it's it's uh, set up as a shared page. But uh, it's typically assumed that the guest will be doing a P validate and making and changing the guest state to it to be a shared state uh, uh, before making this uh, VMG exit call. And uh, you could use a query uh, to un to see if. Uh, the doable page has been set up uh, or not. And then the guest can also use a hypervisor uh, provided page to actually use as the doable page. So these are the new uh, NAE events which are added for uh, restricted interrupt injection support. Uh, so this, uh, the whole flow looks good. Is there any question? Uh, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay. So, uh, continuing with the interrupt injection flow. So, how does the whole interrupt injection flow look like? Uh, from the KVM host side, 
it either injects the the non-maskable event. So it basically sets the doorbell pending event fields uh, to either the machine check or the NMI thing. And then it basically injects uh, through the VMCB. There's only uh, the event injection field now only supports on the VMCB only a new vector. That once restricted interrupt injection feature is enabled, it only supports the HV vector field. And this is a benign exception. It's uh, it's uh, and the type of injection support is an exception. It's just basically an exception type. Uh, that's the only supported uh, exception uh, or the interrupt event which can be injected into gas now uh, once this feature is enabled. In case uh, also it also has an interrupt to inject at that particular point. It will also set the uh, HV vector field, and then uh, again, this is just the doorbell indication. The actual event or the actual interrupt being injected, for the example, the non-maskable or the machine check thing, or the vector to be injected is actually specified from the in the on the doorbell in the doorbell page, the HV doorbell page. So here we are setting up the vector to say what is the epic uh, pending interrupt uh, right now. Uh, at this point, uh, when we Get, uh, when we enter guest and uh, through the interrupt descriptor table, the bound HV exception gets triggered. The guest could be running with interrupts. It could be a case where the interrupts are enabled or disabled on the guest. So the non-maskable interrupts will always be handled irrespective of uh, 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 the guest interrupt or disabled, our guest are interrupt or disabled or not. One thing important to remember here is that bound HV exception always injects into the guest. It doesn't, uh, it's, it's, the hypervisor can just inj inject pound HV anytime into the guest. It doesn't have access to the guest interrupt the uh, flag feature. Uh, if the guest interrupts are enabled or disabled or doesn't, uh, it cannot also check the VMCB's uh, 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 control fields like the interrupt state of the guest or something. It's, the pawn HV always gets inserted. It's up to the guest to how to handle it. Uh, and in a typical case, all the uh, non-maskable and machine check events will always be handled uh, irrespective of guest uh, interrupts enabled or disabled. Uh, and then it, at that point, because this, again, the interrupt comes through through, uh, through the interrupt descriptive, descriptive table, so interrupts could be actually disabled or enabled at that particular point. If the guest interrupts are enabled, it will handle the doable pending event. Uh, which is the vector, the vector interrupt, dispatch the interrupt, do an IRS. In case the interrupts were disabled, it's just going to simply do an IRS at that particular point. Uh, when the interrupt get enabled on the guest, so the pawn HP exception will not come again because it's been already delivered at that particular point. Uh, it's only when the interrupt get enabled on the guest, so the, the guest interrupt enabled feature, wherever the guest interrupts are getting enabled, those code paths have to be specifically uh, uh, set up to or programmed in that sense. The, the, the uh, whatever the code paths in the guest uh, have interrupt enable, or for example, the interrupt enabling code paths in the guest have to now check if there was a double pending event at that point and then dispatch the interrupts. So this is specifically required because found HV is not going to come in again. It has already been inserted at this particular point. And because the interrupts were disabled, they were not handled in this point. So all these uh, guest interrupt ex exception or uh, interrupt enabled paths will have to be uh, in a way para virtualized uh, or a hand have to explicitly check if there was a pending event uh, uh, in the doable uh, vector field and then dispatch the interrupt uh, specifically for that. So, so, so it's important to remember that these paths have to be enlightened or the, the guest has, support has to be added to handle these particular events at that, uh, uh, in those both parts. Most specifically looking at- uh, Rakesh, can you pause again? We lost the audio in the room. I'll tell you when it comes back. Sorry about this. Can I go in now? Uh, no, we're still we're still trying to connect. Hang on. Oh, okay. You'll hear it when we connect, because I'll have a massive feedback loop.
Okay. 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 Uh, so should I continue with slide seven? Or should I go with slide eight now? Um, I think you can go on with the with the next slide. You are finished okay. with this one. Okay. Okay. So looking at the host side uh, interrupt injection flow. So uh, these are the typical uh, uh, callback events or, or the the callback ops on the. KV Sorry, Atish, can you stop again? We had another cock up. We're just trying to lose the mic. Right. Go on. Okay. So these are the specific callbacks uh, which get invoked uh, when a particular event has to be injected on the on the host side on the KVM side of things. So uh, so in case there's an NMI pending, uh, the specific callback is invoked. Uh, now there is, as I mentioned, there is no way uh, the host once the restricted interrupt injection feature has been enabled, we cannot depend and uh, reliably check on the the VMCB control flags like interrupt state or the NMI state or something. So we check the Dobel event to see if there's already a pending event inserted uh, or injected into guest. If it's not, then we invoke the set NMI function and which will basically set the Dobel pending event and then call inject HV, which we see below. Similarly for an injectable interrupt, again, the interrupts allow or to see if the interrupts are blocked on the guest, we cannot uh, reliably depend on the VMCB uh, interrupt control state. So, and plus because it's running in a, it's an SNP guest and uh, anything up, up beyond SCV ES guest, we cannot have the resistor state. So we cannot even uh, we cannot check the uh, the, uh, the guest uh, resistor state to see if the interrupt flags are enabled in our flags or not. So we again depend on the doorbell uh, pending events to see if there's already a vector interrupt injected. If not. Uh, the set IQ callback is invoked, and uh, this basically sets the global pending event vector to the next pending interrupt, and then calls the lower level inject HV routine. Uh, no further signal is basically used to indicate that the guest is currently handling an interrupt. So, uh, in case it's not set, and uh, we basically just set it up to ensure we, we are not injecting uh, an interrupt, uh, and the guest is not ready to handle it. And then set just uh, the event injection field in VMC. We can now just specify this benign HV vector, and of the, uh, the interrupt type here is in ex an exception type. Uh, this is on the host side of things. On the guest side, uh, so interrupt comes through the interrupt to the scripted table. Only the bound HV exception interrupt can now come in. Uh, it, uh, basically, it's uh, at this point it's it switches to the the on HV IST stack is uh, uh, as per the x86-64, there are like eight in, uh, IST stacks. So we use one of the pound, uh, the pound HV exception also uses one of the IST stacks to switch to the uh, pound HV, uh, the, the, to the interrupt IST stack, the hardware based IST stack. And then, uh, in, and then it basically starts handling the exception. Uh, in case the interrupts were disabled, on guess we only handle the NMI or the machine check and just leave the handler. Uh, in case interrupts were enabled, uh, we have to ensure we do a atomic exchange instruction here because the guest uh, interrupts could be injected and the guest uh, could be uh, could be injected at any instruction boundary. So we ensure it has to be atomically, the Dobel pending events have to be uh, cleared and also uh, uh, clear and picked up uh, atomically to ensure that there uh, uh, that there is no uh, uh, because because of the guest instructions uh, interrupts being injected at any instruction boundary. So this the atomic action is uh, in, needed to ensure that. And uh, if in case it was again we check there is a NMI or pending machine check event handle it, and if there is a vector interrupt, we specifically check for vector uh, system vectors. And we will see uh, there's an optimized way which we try to handle the system vectors here. Uh, it was one way was uh, just calling each system vector specifically, and that was just uh, just too many if and else statements, uh, just uh, making each and every system vector call here and then uh, trying to invoke them uh, explicitly, each, like for every, each and every system vector call. So we try to optimize that. I have a slide for that. We we come to that. Otherwise. In case of uh, all other device vectors or something, we just invoke the common interrupt handler. Uh, there's a specific check which needs to be done at the end of the interrupt uh, 
uh, or at the interrupt return or the interrupt execute path. Uh, because now all these exceptions, all the interrupts are being handled by just one specific uh, exception handler. It's, it's, it's an exception handler, which is handling all device interrupts is, and everything. So uh, the interrupt exit path has to be modified. Uh, on, on the return path, it's a possibility that in case we came in through the Ponyjet HP exception handler through the user mode, uh, it was through a user mode invocation uh, or a user mode context. Uh, it's possible that while on the return on the return path, we could be actually getting preempted uh, because they will be at the end of uh, interrupt processing. There'll be like soft IP processing, and then there'll be uh, 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 there'll be some there might be another thread getting activated or uh, ready to run at that particular point. And uh, so we need to ensure that. So and there is a possibility that this uh, pound HP handler gets uh, preempted at that particular point, and even before we could do an EOI, we get preempted from this particular point. Uh, so th this could lead to conditions uh, which we actually saw, uh, where we got preempted, and then we did an EOI on an another vCPU. So we got preempted and rescheduled on another C uh, CPU, and then we, when we did an EOI, it was on a on a different vCPU. So it, which could lead to cases where uh, uh, the, uh, the the uh, the actual uh, 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 the, on the VCP which was uh, interrupted uh, was not doing the UI and it's uh, so the interrupt never got really cleared and uh, uh, we had missed interrupts uh, because of that particular reason. So so we had to have specific handling for that, which uh, I have another slide for that. And at the end of this whole thing, if we check if there is a, a requirement of an EOI, and then we do an EOI. Can uh, you hear me? Yeah. I have a, I have a question to this code flow. Um, yeah. Because yeah. I don't see it. Are you doing any stack switches in, in this flow, or is, it, is all of this running on the HV IST stack? It is, uh, uh, before we switch to, uh, it's just initially we do an HV switch to the HV IST stack, and then we switch to a specific. Uh, Exception handler, uh, exception stack. Uh, before we come to HP ROI handle exception, so it's so not no. seen here. But we do switch to uh, pound HP stack initially, and then we switch switch to an exception uh, stack before we call this particular exception handler. Okay, so you are switching to the to the right stack depending on which event was injected. Right, right. So the NMI right, right. handle, the handle, for example, runs on the NMI stack and. No, this is just just an exception stack in that sense. It's just a uh, uh, just just uh, just uh, uh, just an ex uh, exception stack. It's not uh, it's not a specific NMI stack or something. Yeah, I, I think the NMI handler um, relies on running on the NMI stack so pretty heavily in in x eighty six sixty four. Okay. So. So, so I think for NMI you need to switch to the NMI stack. Not sure about about the interrupts. You at least need to get off the HV stack some, somehow to some other stack because yeah, it's an IST stack. And when the hypervisor decides to inject another event, then you are basically uh, then you are doomed. So yeah, there, there, there is a uh, there, there, yeah. There is, yeah, I can hear you. So there is a uh, there is a specific uh, uh, thing we need to handle. Uh, because pound HP exception handler can just come into at any particular time, right? It's 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 uh, doesn't depend on uh, what the guest state is. So we have to make sure uh, that we have to uh, the, the guest has to ensure that the pound HP exception handler uh, that uh, that any kind of nested uh, invocations of pound HP handler does not corrupt the pound HP in ISP stack. So there is a specific check we have to do for that to handle nested pound HP exceptions. Uh, but as far as I remember, we are not switching to an NMI stack or a, a, or a machine check handler stack. So, we have Tish, we lost the audio again. If you just pause, I'll tell you when it comes back. Uh, can I go in now? No, it's still missing. Hang on.
Uh, yeah, so I was talking. So we do protect again nested HP stack invocation. Uh, there's a specific check for that. Uh, 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 but I am not too sure if we are checking. We are switching to a NMI stack specifically to handle just the non-maskable events. Uh, this. Uh, I'm afraid we lost audio again. We're going to have technical difficulties like this for the rest of the talk. How much more is there? Shish, can you go forward? Uh, yeah, I can. I can. I can. can you go ahead? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, so I'm, I'm not really sure we are switching to an uh, NMI specific stack uh, because all this is handled on the specific exception stack just for found HP. Uh, but I need to be, I need to see, uh, look at that. I don't think we are handling it in a specific NMI stack right now. Uh, yeah, okay. I, I, I think it's important to get the stack hinting right here. So to. Sure. Um, okay. Yeah, that's yeah. something that I need to look at. And with nested interrupts and stuff. So. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, I, I have a look at that. Okay. Uh, again, so we have uh, also because HP is delivered without regard to any interrupt shadows. So there is a so there the guests don't have any real control on uh, how to do interaction between halt and interrupt. So. Typically, this is how uh, uh, when we do a step, uh, when we do a halt uh, execution on guest, it's typically going to do an STI and halt. And uh, again, uh, STI will by itself not enable. Uh, uh, once the uh, important point to remember here is that once the interrupt flags gets uh, uh, or interrupts get enabled again, the pound HV exception will just not come in uh, automatically from the hardware point of view. Uh, because it's just delivered at any particular guest instruction boundary or something. So whenever the hyper, whenever the hypervisor does it, so we have to add specific checks uh, wherever we are enabling interrupts uh, to basically check for a pending HVDB at that particular point and see if there's any pending events, uh, non-maskable or ma vector interrupts, and handle them before uh, we basically invoke halt in this case. Uh, Again, if you see uh, more specific code paths, uh, so everything where interrupts are being enabled and disabled, these uh, uh, these checks have to be added. So again, guests can receive an HP notification anytime, and it's up to the guest to see how to handle it. So wherever we are enabling interrupts, say for example, uh, the native IP enable routine as part of the x 64 code, it's, it's uh, so Nesti I will not really uh, once the interrupts get enabled, the found HP exception will not come in at that particular point. So we do need to again add specific checks uh, that there is any pending HVDB event and then handle it. Yeah. Similarly, at the end of the interrupt exit path, uh, the IRIT, once there's an IRIT, it will not clear, It will once the interrupts are enabled again as part of IRIT, we, we, it, the found HP exception will just not come by its own. The hardware will not inject it. So, Again, there's a specific uh, handling added for that to check uh, if there are any pending events. Um, Ashish? Yes. Yeah. Um, can you go slide back? Yeah. So this check works for the native IQ enable case, but I think it's still racy for the for the idle case because uh, what you're in yeah. the idle case is when you call the halt instruction, you need to be sure that no events are pending and. Uh, uh, and it will always um, will always um, be racy. So, what the what, what the pending function needs to do is it basically needs needs to change the the code flow when an event comes in and not return to to the halt. Uh, so, uh, so 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 what are you recommending here? Uh, well, you need a specific SNP halt function, which which um, uh, uh, halt itself. Okay. Because you know when 
or at the hypervisor as well, as well behaved, you know that no new event is is coming when unless you set a bit in the page again, right? In the in the double page. Ah, uh, okay. Ah, uh, okay. Okay. This is something I will have to look in. Yeah. Uh, also, I think there is something uh, uh, from the hypervisor or the KVM side of things where probably there is a halt intercept, and uh, uh, I think as part of the halt intercept, uh, the okay, uh, host, the host or the hypervisor will check if there are any pending events and will inject it at that particular point. Uh, uh, so, so to to ensure that the guest doesn't miss any events at that particular point, if there's anything pending when the halt intercept is invoked or something. The hot instruction doesn't cause a VC, right? It causes, a, uh, it's an automatic exit, basically. Uh -huh. right? uh, yeah, but there could be an intercept on the on the host side, right? Uh, the hot yeah, intercept right. could be the hot intercept can be can be still can be still trapped, right? The hot intercept could be invoked, uh, could be uh, could be could be uh, could be triggered on the could be triggered on the KVM side, right? Yes, but but KVM can inject and interrupt before the guest executes the hold, right? And after yeah. the pending HVDB has done its checks. Right. This this could be yes. This could be racy on that on that side. Yes. Oh, you can't atomically guarantee that it was a check and then go into hold. Okay. Uh, so as I mentioned about this optimized system vector handling, so instead of calling each and every system vector uh, specifically, now we construct a system vector table. Uh, we basically overload the declare IDT entry uh, macro, and basically uh, as part of that macro, uh, we basically create a new help section uh, and, and set up all the system vectors there uh, as per this structure. And uh, all these are placed into the new, all the system vectors are now placed into this ELF section. And while bringing uh, the guest is booting up, we construct a system vector table and uh, construct a system vector dispatch table through which all the system vector get, get vectors get invoked. So this is all dynamically created. It's, uh, and we don't need to explicitly check and invoke each and every system vector uh, separately. Uh, Uh, so this, uh, yeah. yeah. Any question on that? Okay. Uh, uh, so as I mentioned, we need to fix the preemption in the interrupt exit code path. So again, we overload the define uh, all the uh, specific macros which generate stuffs for the interrupt descriptor table entries or interrupt vectors. And uh, on this uh, specific thing, like for hash defined identity tree, ID, IDT entry IQ function or the macro, uh, we basically added a new uh, way of exiting, uh, a new function which gets, or a new callback which gets invoked uh, as part of the IQ exit code path. And it checks if it's, the, it's, a, it's an invocation to the user mode. It's a user mode context or a callback a context at that particular point. And we were handling events uh, uh, the this is our own uh, flag in case we were handling any HVDB event uh, or any vectors at that time. And in, in that case, we don't follow the normal exit, interrupt exit path. So we don't get preempted in this particular code path. And, uh, and the other uh, normal, other kernel based invocations or kernel context invocations, we follow uh, the normal interrupt exit path. Uh, to handle the mistake uh, bound HP exceptions. So as I mentioned once, uh, uh, the IST stack is used to handle the nested HP exception, but uh, in a typical case, uh, till this flag is set, uh, the hypervisor is not going to inject another interrupt uh, into or any another bound HP into, into the guest. Uh, and guest only ensures that it's uh, clearing this flag once it's has switched out the IC stack and started and finished the current uh, form HP exception handling. But there is still a case where there is a malicious hypervisor which can continue to inject form HP exceptions into, into the guest. So there is a particular window between uh, the, before the IC stack is switched out and uh, where the nested HP can come in. And because uh, this is again going to overflow the or uh, uh, overlay, overlay the 
previous uh, pound HP added frame on the ISP stack. So it's, it's going to get corrupted at that particular point. And we probably will never be able to turn back to the old uh, pound uh, or, the, or the interrupted pound HP exception at that point. So we basically check in case uh, we are still on the ISP stack and, uh, uh, and then another pound HP interrupt has come in. And uh, at that point, uh, because the, the added frame is already corrupted by this point, we just do a panic at that particular point. So this is uh, uh, the way we currently detect uh, nested point HP exceptions. And then the only way to prevent it, the only way to uh, get, uh, recover from it right now is to just do a panic at that particular point. Other, uh, other more Ashish, more, yeah. Ashish, you're quite a bit yeah. over, over, over time already. Do you? Um... So I just discussed the last slide, yeah. So the alternate injection mode is the other injection mode the, in, uh, 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 on top of a certain interrupt injection. The only difference here is it replaces all hypervisor interrupt queuing and injection with the guest control injection. So this is in a case of a multi VMPL architecture like SVSM where it's uh, now injects guest uh, interrupts directly into the encrypted VMSA. And uh, the guest has to go through and the encrypted VMSA to basically get the, the interrupted or the inject, uh, injected event. Uh, we have basically uh, support implemented uh, for restricted interrupt injection right now. And uh, we have both the hypervisor support and the guest OVMF and the guest kernel support. And uh, we plan to post RFC patches for them uh, probably as uh, will be the next step after the SNP host uh, uh, patches are uh, supported and up, uh, stream and upstream. Uh, but I think uh, we, we have plans to post RFC patches soon. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Uh, so, okay. uh, are there any other questions or something? Some more questions, yeah. Three, two, one. Okay. Seems there are no more questions. So thanks, Ashish, for your presentation. And sorry for the audio issues. Okay, thank you.